So uh, my talk is what's in this cookbook, or how do I know what I'm eating? Uh, the cookbook metaphor uh, and eating and knives and, and recipes and ingredients kind of proliferate across all of the uh, chef infrastructure. So uh, I want to talk briefly about figuring out how to know what's in a cookbook when you want to upgrade it. My name is Mike Beeler. I work in operations here at DataDog. Our site is datadog.com. My Twitter handle, Mike Beeler. Uh, I am I'm the chief editor of offschool.org. If you haven't heard about it, go to that site and see it. Uh, if you want to add content, do so. Pull requests, yeah. Uh, I work on the chef community very, very, very much. I don't work for Osco. And I'm a Boulder Derby referee in Skydive. Uh, the, the, the problem starts when you start writing code. It starts with, with, I want to do something good. I want to give back to the world. I want to give what I have learned and what I have worked hard and toiled, sweat and tears, and you want to give it back. So you write some code. You write a, a cookbook to install a server. And you get all of these, uh, these changes that have happened throughout the period of time. And you kind of have all these commits in your uh, source control, and you don't know kind of what happened between points. And the person reading your code, now you've open sourced it, really has no kind of idea what your commit messages mean, uh, how in-depth they are, and they don't know what is going on in this differential of software. So in many, many uh, traditional software uh, packaging, there's release notes, there's readings, there's, there's many conventions that are followed, and uh, you, a lot of people use those in order to determine, do I need to upgrade, what's the upgrade path, uh, and you know, what to do next. In, in the chef world, since you're, you're, you could theoretically write one cookbook that deploys everything in your stack, uh, that, that's really a bad idea because now you have one big piece of code and you don't know what it does and if you change it, it affects everything. So you, you put stuff in smaller cookbooks, you leverage other people's cookbooks like libraries, and there's so many of them that might know what's going on. So uh, the, the problem exists, so we have version numbers to solve that. But version numbers don't necessarily solve the problem the way you expect them to. These are a list of Red Hat versions and kind of a number at a release date. So they don't really map to like a timeline. I know that Ubuntu's do map. So uh, with, there was the, this, uh, the, this thing in, I think, June of 2011, where uh, one of the uh, main people at GitHub wrote sendbear.org, semantic version. This is not a new concept. Many uh, existing software development and packaging rules have existing uh, rules, and they follow a very similar construct. Semver just comes out and says, this is what we really think, this is the strict way to do it, the strict this, and it maps across many, many different possibilities. And these are just some of the, the kind of the progressions of versions for three of the uh, pretty, pretty big uh, things. Now, what happens when these aren't software packages? We don't roll these as, as, uh, as packages. We, we distribute them very often as either a tarball or, or you know, you're copying somebody's GitHub. Uh, so how do, you, how do you discern what's the difference in a cookbook? In software, we know, OK, there are certain things. If you add a feature, if you change uh, you know, compatibility. So what Kevin Christian and I collaborated, uh, I've never met Kevin in person. I don't know where he is on the planet. This is a lovely part of the internet. We collaborated on writing the cookbook versioning policy. Uh, so that way, you can take ideas and ideals like Sunbear, semantic versioning, and apply them to a chef cookbook. The ideal is, again, the, the terminology in CVP is very specific to chef. But you can take that ideal and then apply it to anything else. Anything that has a public API uh, that is a big part of, of versioning is what, what is a public API in a cookbook, and then when do you increment the different parts of a version number. So you increment the, a major version when you break something or uh, that is, has existed before. So that is an immediate red flag to somebody that you now got version 2, and then now there's a version three. That's a red flag that says you changed something. I need to read the readme. I need to look at the upgrade path. I need to test it a little more thoroughly. Minor versions should only include, you know, uh, feature upgrades. So something that doesn't break, something new, uh, a new recipe, a new provider, attributes that provide same defaults. So that way, 
if I run this, I don't have to suddenly add another attribute file somewhere else. And the patch version, the .c, that should be pretty much exclusively used for fixing something that is currently broken and, you know, typos in your readme and updating documentation. I don't know if you want to release an entire version of something because of updated documentation, but it's been known to happen. So having this kind of notion of what you choose to each one of those version uh, components means that you can then map the ideals that you have of, I know what's changed, I'm maintaining this cookbook. I can now update the correct part of that version so somebody else reading uh, before they even read the code, they just see, oh, it's version 2.1.1, oh, I already have 2.1.0, I can upgrade it. So my version in theory is don't break things. You know, if you don't have to, don't, 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 just don't break it. Uh, don't surprise anybody else because the minute you think nobody's using your code, you find out that they are. Uh, and if you're going to break it, be loud. Use that X. Use, you know, write a big, you know, big thing in your briefing. Uh, I do a lot of chef work. The Food Fight Show uh, is a podcast that uh, I, I sometimes am on and other people are. This is a great place where we talk about DevOps, Chef, and other kinds of uh, configuration management, all sorts of other fun stuff. So check that out. Uh, this topic has come up before, and it probably will again. Uh, if you want to talk to me after the nights are over, I can talk about all of these topics, uh, and I'm happy to give you a hug if that's what you want, because mm -hmm. hug ops is awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, is that my time? I don't know if it's going to end. Okay, thank you.